Meat is the yardstick of protein foods because meat measures up to every protein need. The American Meat Institute presents The Life of Riley, a half hour with radio's friendliest family, and starring William Bendix as Riley. When you buy shoes, you want to know not only what size, but also how well are they made. To get the right kind of proteins into your meals, you must know not only how much, but also how good. Meat is the yardstick of protein foods because meat measures up to every protein need. And now, the life of Riley. Well, it's a fine spring evening in the suburb of Los Angeles where the Rileys live. War worker Riley has just returned to the bosom of his family and is receiving a communique on current events at home. Pop, are you going to be busy after dinner? I don't know, Junior. Why? Well, you know that rabbit hut you built me? Yeah. Well, I think we've got to add some guest rooms. Not then don't, Junior. When I built you that hutch, I explained to you that it was only for one rabbit. I know, Pop, but you should explain it to the rabbit. <laughs> Say, uh, how's about starting dinner, Dumplin'? Just a minute, dear. What's your hurry? Uh, I'm just using strategy. Just once I want to reach for some meat without getting slashed by your Uncle Baxter. <laughs> How you exaggerate. Uncle Baxter isn't a big eater. Of course, he does like to nibble now and then. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the way he nibbles. <laughs> this morning, there was a foxhole in the chocolate cake. <laughs> well, last night he had a headache. He thought a bite to eat would draw the blood from his head. What we need is something to draw his head from the icebox. <laughs> oh, hello, Daddy. Hello, Dad. Dad, what were you talking about when I came in? Well, I was saying that your mother's uncle is... Never a... mind, Riley. <laughs> no free speech anymore. <laughs> well, my dear children. Hello, uh, Uncle Max. Now, don't tell me it's dinner time already. <laughs> We don't have to tell you, you got a stomach with a built-in clock. <laughs> well, yes, walking outdoors certainly does sharpen one's appetite. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Baxter, tell me one thing. Did you pull up them weeds in the backyard? No, but I did something more important. I counted them. <laughs> you counted them? Precisely. Mm. The breeding habits of weeds fascinate me. There are 82 more weeds today than there were yesterday. Uh, Uncle Baxter, you promised Riley you'd weed the victory garden for him. Oh, and so I shall next week. Um, until then, I shall be busy writing an article for Better Homes and Gardens, entitled, Take Heed, the Weed. <laughs> Baxter, if you don't get a job pretty soon, you're going to find moss growing on you. And then I'll write an article entitled, Take Hold, the Mold. <laughs> They stop bickering, you two. Uh, oh, I almost forgot, Uncle Baxter. Here's a letter came for you. Oh, for me? Well, it's from my brother Buckley in New York. Excuse me, I must see what good old Buckley has to say. Oh, what's uh, Uncle Buckley say? Uh, we'll see as soon as I find my glasses. <laughs> if I know that big mouth, he'll have plenty to say. Now, Riley, you only met Uncle Buckley once at our wedding. What a chiseler. <laughs> I invite him to the wedding. He eats all the sandwiches, drinks all the charged water. Dances with all the dames. Then for a wedding present, he offers me a free chance on a punch board. <laughs> he meant to buy us a real gift later on, but you know, with Uncle Buckley, he'd have a thousand dollars one day and nothing the next day. Well, I met him. It must have been the next day. <laughs> children, children, great news. My brother Buckley's ship has come in at last. Listen to this. Dear Baxter... Glad to hear how well you are doing with the Rileys. What he means is how well you are doing the Rileys. <laughs> I am now president of a million-dollar concern which is rapidly expanding. Could let you in on the ground floor, wish you were here to discuss. But, of course, you have your own large affairs to think of. Ah, that's the way it always was with Buckley. Have a thousand dollars one day and a million dollars the next. Hey, Baxter. Hmm? 
If you was in New York, he'd give you a good job, wouldn't he? Yes, he does seem eager to have me by his side. <laughs> Uncle Baxter, I just had one of my greatest ideas. Seeing that Uncle Buckley needs you, why don't you go to New York? What, and leave you all to shift for yourselves? <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't be so selfish. But, Uncle Baxter, if it meant a new start for you, we wouldn't mind your going. We'll be brave. <laughs> but, children, this little nest has become home to me. Ah, oh, this little nest will not miss one little bird. A vulture. <laughs> it would be the making of you, Uncle Baxter. New York. What a town. The Empire State. The Waldorf Astoria. The Fulton Fish Market. <laughs> but, Riley, Uncle Baxter hasn't enough money to go to New York. But he's going to have. How? Oh, I've got a little dough saved up, and I'm going to use it to start Baxter climbing up the ladder of success to Uncle Buckley's ground floor. What do you say? Oh, Riley, that's a wonderful idea. You know, it does sound attractive, huh? By Jove, I do it. Atta boy, Uncle Baxter. Right after Grub, you and me are going downtown and buy a ticket on the fastest train they've got. All right. We've been in line here for three hours. You're next, Riley. Go on, speak up. Speak up. Yes, sir. What is it, please? Uh, we want a reservation for New York. A drawing room will do. On your fastest train. <laughs> uh, uh, what year do you want to go? <laughs> the best trains are sold out months in advance. Next, please. Uh, uh, have you any trains going to New York? A any trains at all? Anything with a lower berth? Berth? We haven't even got a chair for three weeks. But, my dear fellow, I've got to get to New York immediately. There must be some way. Sure. Can you operate a hand car? <laughs> hey, bud, how about a bus for New York? There's anything with seats in <laughs> Hey, Joe, here's a guy who wants a seat to New York. <laughs> Have pity, we've been all over town. There's no way to get to New York. Maybe you could take a trolley. <laughs> Keep asking for transfers. <laughs> look, look, there's a place. The Crow Flies Travel Bureau. I am not going to New York by crow. <laughs> look at that sign. Go east by bus. Only $21. Come on, let's try this. This shabby place? How can they get me to New York for $21? Well, this guy can do it cheap because he's down at the basement and he ain't got no overhead except the street. Well, what'll it be, gents? The Crow Flies Travel Bureau at your service? Uh, that, uh, Riley's my name. My, my uncle here wants to go to New York by bus. New York, eh? Yeah. You mean New York, New York? <laughs> yeah, right outside of Brooklyn, Brooklyn. <laughs> Well, I'll get you to New York in a jiffy. I mean, for $21? Absolutely. I don't believe it. Uncle, you're practically standing right in Times Square. Now, let's see. Uh, where are we now? Uh... Well, that's a nice way to start. We're in Los Angeles. Okay. We start from Los Angeles, and we jump you over to Pothole of Texas. Texas. So far, south. Texas. There's a place I always wanted to see. Uncle Baxter, you're a lucky guy. And from Texas, he goes right to New York. Huh? Well, practically. Mm -hmm. In Texas, he hops a different bus, which shoots him right through to Painted Hat, Oklahoma, where uh, he has a four-day hangover. <laughs> and I'm poor Uncle Baxter. You'll be seeing America through bloodshot eyes. <laughs> four days? Well, can't you get me quicker connection? Why, sure, Uncle. Certainly. I can reroute you to Wishing Well, Missouri, which will save you 20 minutes. Then, only three days later, we whisk you over to Pig's Eye, Kentucky. Pig's Eye. There's a place I always wanted to see. The Old South. Yep. And from Kentucky, the next jump is up the good old Mississippi River. Ain't that romantic? A bus up the Mississippi. <laughs> uh, can he leave tomorrow? Sure, but it ain't a bus. It's a boat. I can't ride on a boat. I'd be seasick. Ah, oh, why, just think of them moonlight nights on the Mississippi. 
with the banjos twanging and the nice, cool glass of that crinoline. <laughs> Uncle Baxter, you'll be a new man when you get off the boat in Chicago. Riley, the Mississippi does not run through Chicago. Well, that's right. The boat takes you up to Cairo, Illinois. And get this, man. What? No waiting at all. I shoot you up the Ohio River on a launch. But, 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 and in no time at all, you're safe and sound in Custis Cross in Missouri. <laughs> No crow ever flew like this. <laughs> no, but now you're in Custis Crossing. And don't forget, this trip is only $21. Yes, I know. But how, may I ask, do I get out of Custis Crossing? Hey, can you row a boat, Uncle? No, I cannot row a boat. I want a bus to get here to New York. New York? Ain't that kind of an out-of-the-way place? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, mister. We don't have any connections for it in Custis Crossing. Don't forget, there's a war going on. Then I'll wait till it's over. You can't do that. Uncle Buckley's waiting for you in New York. Riley, when you can offer me a direct route to New York, I will go. Until then, I will be forced to remain in your small and not too comfortable guest room. Hmm. Ain't them relatives murder, Mr. Riley? Yeah. yeah, he's been a grindstone on my neck for two years. Well, to me. What? Listen. Yeah? For five bucks, I know a voodoo woman who'd sell you... Go away, powders. <laughs> They're great on relatives. Oh, well, no, thanks, just the same. Look, why don't you just lock him out? I, I couldn't do that. You see, he'd done me a favor once. Two years ago, he gave me a pint of blood. Yeah? And ever since then, he's been taking it by drop, by drop. <laughs> From the life of Riley, this is Ken Niles as spokesman for your meat industry. Today, if you took a trip through farm country in almost any part of our nation, you would see lush spring grasses growing taller and richer, the green fields of the western ranges, the bluegrass of Kentucky, clover and alfalfa, and dozens of other forage crops in field and pasture. There, growing in those fields, is an important part of your next winter's food supply. No, nobody is planning to make you eat grass or clover or alfalfa. The finely bred meat animals of our country's ranges and pastures and farmyards turn this grass into roasts and steaks and chops. Cattle, sheep, and hogs make grasses into meat. Some livestock, then, is fed grains and other finishing feeds before they move on to market, on to the bridge, which is your meat industry. On that bridge, they are changed into fresh meat, canned meat ham and bacon, sausage, lard, and into hundreds of byproducts needed both for industry and for war. Off the bridge, that is the meat industry, they move through the retailers to your homes or to the military depots to ship food on to our fighters. In bridging the gap between the livestock producers and civilian needs for meat in times of peace, your meat industry has built itself strong enough to serve the needs of both workers and fighters in time of war. And now back to the life of Riley. Twenty-four hours have passed, but to Riley it only seems like a year because Uncle Baxter is still on his hands. Don't take it so hard, Riley. Something may turn up. Oh, I don't know, Dumplin'. All day long at the plant I couldn't get it out of my mind. I was working on a big bomber and I kept thinking if only I could smuggle that plane out of the plant, we could fly Uncle Baxter to New York. Muggle out a big bomber? Daddy! I know it's a nutty idea. Where are you going to get gas today? Huh? <laughs> hey, Pop, we're famous. Look at Mom, our family gets mentioned in the paper. Oh, what's it say to you? It's in the social notes. It says, Baxter Turnbull, prominent West Coast magnate, will be super chiefing at L.A. today to join his brother Buckley Turnbull, well-known New York industrialist. Super chiefing out. He ain't even bussing out. <laughs> Coast Magnet. That's another name for Santa Monica Beachcomber. <laughs> Look at them suitcases of Baxter's. Standing there so near the door. So near and yet still here. Hey, Pop, there must be some way to get Uncle Baxter out of town. Not a chance. One time I even thought of trying to mail him back. <laughs> what an idea. He'd be covered with stamps. He wouldn't cost so much. Third class. He'd have to go first class. He's writing on him. 
He's got memories of Mabel tattooed on his chest. Well, my dear children. Junior, hide your piggy bank. Here comes that West Coast magnet. <laughs> well, children, I've tried all day. Still no transportation. So if I stay a few more weeks, you won't think I'm imposing, will you? Well, since you can't get away, you're welcome to stay, Uncle Baxter. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Riley. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Be serene, Riley. Count your blessings. Well, I'll unpack my bags again, eh? Call me when dinner's ready, won't you? Just unpack some pajamas and a toothbrush. I ain't given up hope yet. <laughs> I sure thought next time them bags moved, I'd see them going the other way. Well, Bab, help me carry the dinner into the dining room, will you? Yes, Mother. You, Riley, it's me, Waldo Benny. Oh, hello, Waldo, come on in. Hey, Waldo, how come that wife of yours let you out of the house? Riley, when you got a wife like mine, you got to use strategy. Yeah. This is the night she plays gin rummy with her Aunt Gussie. And you know what I did? No, what? This afternoon, I stole the ace, king, and jack. So they had to send me out for a new deck of cards. That's using the old noggin, Waldo. Oh, I've been doing that for almost a year now. <laughs> I always take different cards. Pretty soon I'll have a whole deck of my own, and then I can play solitaire. <laughs> Waldo, when a man's outnumbered at his house, he gets to be pretty foxy, huh? Eh? Riley. Right. I came to offer my sympathy. Uh, I hear your uncle isn't leaving after all. Ah, uh, the seven-year itch is still with us. <laughs> Riley, I have a way to get your uncle out of town. Well, though, if you can show me how to get Baxter a trip to New York, I'll never forget you. I can do it. I'm an expert on traveling. On account of someday, I'm going to run away myself. What? I knew I could never get away on a train or bus. It would be sure. Yeah. So I've kept in touch with another way up. What way? Every day of the week, somebody drives back east. Last week, there were 17 departures by auto. This week it fell off to 12, but then... Now, now, never mind how many went. Is there one more going? Yes. Yes. There's one going tonight, right through to New York. And there's room for one more passenger in that car, Riley. Waldo, that one more is going to be my Uncle Baxter. Come on, go phone the carpool. Tell him to come and pick up Baxter right away. Pleasure. Baxter, come in here. Hey, Babs. Quick, come in. Junior, don't unpack the pajamas. Riley, what's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Everything's Jake. Uncle Baxter, goodbye. I, 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 I mean, listen. I got a way to get you to New York in a guy's car. This is so sad. What you call, Riley? Hey, Pop, what's up? Daddy, what's happened? Hey, wish Uncle Baxter luck. He's leaving. I am. Junior, bring back his bags. He's leaving tonight. Okay. Bags, kiss your uncle goodbye. He's going any minute. Oh. Uncle Baxter, meet me. This is the smartest decision you ever made. <laughs> Order, 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 everybody. Now, uh, this here is an important event, and time is getting short. Uh, this being a farewell beefsteak banquet, only with lamb stew. We all want to say goodbye to Uncle Baxter. I'll be the toast mixer. Uncle Baxter being guest of honor, we got to let bygones go by and say something nice about him, even if it ain't so. <laughs> okay. Now, first, I'm calling on a young lady who has been a member of this family all her life. I think she's kind of cute. I give you my favorite daughter, Miss Babs Riley. Oh, Daddy. I don't know what to say except, well, goodbye, Uncle Baxter, and, and we hope you have a great success in New York, and good luck, and... Oh, dear, I'm really going to miss you, Uncle Baxter. Huh. Oh. That's my da- I, I'm touched, really. Ah, uh, nah, no weeping until uh, he gets in the car to go. <laughs> Here, Uncle, have a cigar. Thank you. Have two cigars, oh, one for the trip. Here, let me bite off the end for you, Uncle Baxter. You overwhelmed me, Riley. Now I don't feel like going at all. Then you better bite off the end yourself. <laughs> now, now the next speaker is a young man who is a gentleman and not much of a scholar. My favorite son, I give you Chester A. Riley, Jr. Well, uh... uh... I'm accustomed as I am to public speaking. I just want to say that what the last speaker says is what I want to say. Uh, especially goodbye, Uncle Baxter. Uh, uh, I mean, good luck, Uncle Baxter. <laughs> oh, wait, I ain't through yet. And I hope you make a million bucks with Uncle Buckley. Thank you, my boy. <clears throat> and in response, I can only... Wait a minute, it ain't your turn yet. The next speaker is a lady who is not only Uncle Baxter's niece but is the best cook in 48 states. My favorite wife. 
I give you Mrs. Peg Riley. <laughs> oh, dear. I... Well, Uncle Baxter, we... we've loved having you here with us, and we'll miss you terribly. And, and I wish you'd change your mind, Uncle Baxter, and stay here. And now the next speaker. <laughs> I am now introducing our guest of honor. He's a Harvard man on account of he was kicked out of Yale. <laughs> Your uncle and mine, I give you, and you can have him, Baxter <laughs> Toastmaster. Mr. Toastmaster, my dear friends, I am almost at a loss for words. However, since brevity is the soul of wit, I shall only say for all you've done for me, a thousand thanks. One for each meal. <laughs> And in appreciation, I have a little gift for each of you. A small expression of my deep affection. Oh. Dear Peg, oh. Riley, oh. Babb, oh. 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 Treasure them till we meet again at our reunion banquet in my penthouse in New York City. Oh, Uncle Baxter, you bought us all presents? Oh, well, gee, we, we didn't expect nothing like this. Oh, I, I've got mine unwrapped. What is it? Look, it's a picture of Uncle Baxter. Oh. <laughs> How nice. I, I wonder what mine can yeah, be. Yeah, Why, mine's a picture of Uncle Baxter, too. Uh, uh, what's yours, Junior? A picture of Uncle Baxter. Just what I needed. What's yours, Pop? What do you think? <laughs> Uncle Baxter, when we look at your mug, your absence will be missed. And now for my speech. I got a little poem which I wrote up out of my own head. This poem was wrote a year ago so as to be ready for this event when you finally moved on. <laughs> Let's hear it. Shh. Adios, Uncle Baxter. It's time for us to part. There's a great big lump of sadness in the middle of my heart. Farewell, dear Uncle Baxter. It's time to say goodbye. But if you say you're going to stay, I'll poke you in the eye. <laughs> Yeah, come on, Baxter. Get his bags, Junior. Here's your hat, Uncle Baxter. No, no, no. We're not going to do a fire. Here's your box. Come, come on, on. Come on. I'm pulling at my sleeve. All right, get in, brother. Get in. I'm four and one half minutes behind my schedule. Get in, Uncle Baxter. One moment. Is this the car in which I am to travel 3,000 miles? A small convertible coupe? What's the difference? It'll be cozy. Oh, but Riley, it's crowded already. It's full of luggage and people. Plenty of room. Jump right in. Am I expected to sit on the lady's lap, sir? No, no, Baxter. You sit on the outside because you get off first at 42nd and Times Square. <laughs> All right, move over, Bessie. Get in, brother. Yeah, go on. Get in, Baxter. I am endeavoring to wedge well, myself in, Riley. Huh. Madam, I am Baxter Turnbull. Ah, we got plenty of time to get acquainted. Shut the door, brother. I'll shut it. There you are, Uncle Baxter. Uh, here, hold your suitcase on your lap, Dad. Okay, Mister. Oh, oh, give our love to Uncle Buckley. Oh. Goodbye. Bye, Uncle Baxter. 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 Hold your hat crossing the Rockies. No use waving no more, Dumplin'. The car's out of sight. I'm going in the house now and count the rooms. <laughs> Riley, you know, it's, it's going to seem strange without him. Yeah. Listen. Ain't the house nice and quiet? And look, my Morris chair. Now any time I want to sit it, I can walk to it without having to raise him for it. Oh, dear. i got to get acquainted with my Morris chair all over again. Good evening, Morris. My name's Riley. Remember me? Well, for goodness sake, talking to an old chair. Morris understands me okay. Ah, oh. oh, this is living. He's gone. The leech who just dropped in for a couple of days has stayed two years. Peg. Peg, the door. The door, he's back. Why, he can't be. He, he didn't like that car. He made them bring him back. Yeah, go ahead, Junior. Oh, hello. Relax, Pop. It ain't Uncle Baxter. Oh, boy, what a relief. 
Who is it, Junior? Who is it? <laughs> Why, Riley, it's me. Your old Uncle Buckley, fresh from New York. <laughs> Uncle Buckley? How in the a world... A little surprise for you, my dear children. I just dropped in to spend a couple of days with you. Uh, my trunks will be here in the morning. <laughs> ah, this is restful. <laughs> hey, look. Already he's got my Morris chair. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. Perhaps you housewives would like some suggestions on the best point values in meat, which are effective today for the month of May. The American Meat Institute suggests all types of sausage are especially point thrifty. For example, pork sausage makes a fine meal served with fried apple rings or cornmeal mush, broiled tomatoes or orange slices. Bacon, too, is something you can use more of now that it's going to remain only one point a pound during the month of May. You can have it with your breakfast pancakes or waffles or wrap it around your meat patties or use it as a part of a main dish for luncheon or dinner. Pork is one of the best ways of getting more B vitamins into our diet. And pork, like all meats, is an excellent source of the right kind of proteins, the kind that do so much for growth and tissue rebuilding. Yes, Meat is the yardstick of protein foods because meat measures up to every protein need. All statements regarding the nutritional value of meat made on this program are accepted by the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. that you've finished supper, Uncle Buckley. Oh, excuse me, my dear niece. I'll just have another piece of your delicious pie. Mm. Another piece? Be serene, Riley. Count your blessings. Ah, ah wonderful wife you have. Wonderful pie she bakes. Uh, oh, but, Uncle Buckley, you still haven't told us why you came to Los Angeles. Oh, that? Yeah. Well, the way I see it, New York is finished. Done. Soon it'll be a veritable ghost town. The future belongs to the great West. Uncle Buckley, what about that million-dollar business you had in New York? What business? Oh, yeah. the, the business? Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Well, you see, my dear Riley, my correspondence in that concern was voluminous. Tremendous. When, when postal rates went up recently, it wiped out my entire reserve. <laughs> Uncle Buckley, we might as well start right now. We can't invite you here with us more than a couple of days. We ain't going to have room. Oh, my dear fellow, I'll just rough it in Baxter's old room. No, you won't, Uncle Buckley. The only reason we kept your brother Baxter in that room for two years, he'd done me a big favor once. He'd give me a pint of his blood two years ago. His blood? It will interest you to know that four years ago, I gave Baxter a pint of blood. Yes, indeed. As I see it, you have my blood in your veins, nephew Riley. Hey, hey, you hear that? For two years, Baxter's been making me pay for that blood. And all the time, he was nothing but the middle man. Uncle Baxter's gone, but it looks like Uncle Buckley will be an even sharper thorn in Riley's side. Follow the life of Riley, starring William Bendix and sponsored by the American Meat Institute, next week at this same time. Uncle Baxter was played by Hans Conry. The program was directed by Don Bernard with music by Lou Cosmo. William Bendix appears by arrangement with Hal Roach. This is Ken Niles inviting you to share the life of Riley once again next week. Thank <laughs> you.